I can't even imagine what the suicide and, and homicide and just the rates of depression, you know, an accidental death due to overdose are going to look like in the future. It's going to reach epidemic proportions. It's already, the, 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 the statistics are already alarming and yet nobody's sounding any alarm bells. Can I borrow someone's phone, please? Anyone? Thank you. Okay, there is a subconscious reaction to these devices when we use them, okay? What if I were to hold my phone while I'm talking to you? I'm not checking it, it's not buzzing, it's not beeping. I'm not even, I'm nothing, I'm just holding it. Do you feel at this moment that you are the most important thing to me right now? No, you do not. Because there is a subconscious reaction we have to the device. When it is out, it makes the people around us feel that they are less important. So when we're, we're walking down the halls in our offices and somebody says, hey boss, can I ask you a question? You go, sure, what's on your mind? We've just told them they're not that important. Or we can go, sure, what's on your mind? And if you don't have a pocket, find a shelf, put it on the shelf, come back and say, sure, what's on your mind? When we show up to a meeting or a lunch or a dinner with our colleagues, our clients or our friends or our families, and we put the phone on the table, we have announced to everyone in the room that they are not that important to us. And by the way, putting the phone upside down is not more polite. <laughs> My favorite one is in the meeting or at a lunch with someone that the phone will ring and the caller ID will pop up and they will go, I'm not gonna get it. Oh, so magnanimous. <laughs> oh, I'm lucky to eat with you today or they could just put the damn thing away. You can tell how addicted we are. When somebody pulls out their phone when you're with them, how uncomfortable does that make us feel? You're walking down the street with someone, they pull their phone out. We feel stupid, so what do we do? We pull our phones out. We're so addicted, somebody goes to the bathroom when we're at dinner and what do we have to sit there by ourselves? God forbid we should look around the room for five minutes. We pull our phones out. Meetings, awful. What do we do when a meeting happens, right? Everybody's sitting waiting for the meeting to start. Bob's running a few minutes late. Bob's here? Okay, start the meeting. Do you know when relationships are built? All that in between time. Thank you very much. Parents have to intervene. We have to stop giving our kids free access to social media and, and phones at young ages. They are not ready for it. Their minds cannot cope with the dopamine. Balance is fine. You can give a kid a phone, but they can't use it in their bedroom. They can't have it at the dinner table. They can't take it to school. They can only have it up to a certain hour and you take it away. They're children. You can take the phone away. We've got to intervene as parents. But as companies, we now have to deal with the influx of kids that are coming into our companies with addiction. Watch, I see it all the time. Walk through any office. You'll see the older employees have their phones on the sides of their computers as they're working. You'll see the youngest employees have their phones face up in front of their keyboards between their arms as they're working. And this is how they work. And the, the science is alarming. They did uh, experiments on mice where they, they did the multitasking. They, they changed the, they changed, they put flashing lights to mimic going from the computer to the cell phone, the computer to the cell phone, to the TV. The mice that were exposed to the changing lights, it took them three times longer to solve a maze than the mice that weren't, and the damage was permanent. It didn't improve when they stopped the lights.